So, just another quick video about Virtual DDA 2021 and a new feature that was added to the latest public release of Virtual DDA 2021, which is currently built 6444. And a new feature is the new export dialog for playlists and virtual folders. And what is that? Well, it's basically, as I say, it's an export function. So if I click on a virtual folder here, you can see I now have an export function. But if I click on a regular favorite folder here, you can see I have nothing down here, no export function. So it's only for the virtual folders and for the regular playlists, uh, for instance, the ones that I have here. So if I click that, you can see I also have an export dialog function. So if I, uh, let I should go into it, what is it? Well, the new part is this little dialog. So uh, you can see I have four options. I can export files, I can export playlists, I can export text, and I can export for CDJ. So let's try all of them. So the first one, files, what's that for? Well, it copies all the tracks that are actually in this folder. So in this case, it's these four, these four tracks. So it copies those, and then it, um, it also adds a little playlist for them. So that means if I say okay to this, I can also pick only get the M3 P3 files or the M4A files, which are basically regular audio, regular video, most of you used, but I'll just get all of it. So let's just keep it here and then click OK. I have a nice little empty folder here that I've created, so it's ready. And then it's already suggested a name for the playlist. And as you can see, it's just the same name as the virtual folder, and it would be the same if you had picked playlists. And as you can also see, it's called M3U in the end. That's a regular playlist file. Uh, so that can basically be played everywhere. But you can also pick a virtual DJ folder if you want to. But let's keep it standard and use the M3, uh, M3U file here. So I'll just call it test. Like that and say save. And you could see very fast that it did something, but it was only four files, so it's pretty fast. So if I then go over to the folder here, you can see I've actually copied the four files into it and an M3U file. And as you probably know, an M3U file is also basically a text file in specific format. So this is actually just the four, uh, the four tracks and a little bit of info about them. And actually there's no path to them because they're in the same folder as the M3U file as a playlist. So if I just click it, it'll start my default program for this. That happens to be Wimamp right now. So as you can hear, it starts playing the tracks like you would expect. So that was the first option. Let's try the second one. So I'll just clear this so it's ready for the next test here and go back to virtual DJ and try the next option. And now it's playlist only. So uh, no tracks, but I'll just say okay to this. And again, I'll just do M3U, a regular format for playlists. And I'll call it test two, so I, we can see it's not the same. So I save that and I go back here. And now we see I have a test two file, but it doesn't, they don't have the tracks. So can I play it then? Well, yes, I can. And that, why is that? Well, that's because it's still just a text file, so we could look at it. But now, as you can see, it has the path to the tracks. So you can still find them in their regular place. It hasn't copied them. It just locates them in their regular place and plays them from there. But that also means that you can't just move this folder, this new folder, to someplace else, to an external drive or, or another laptop or whatever, and expect this to work because you're not bringing the, the audio files with you. So this is just for the playlist. We're not bringing the audio files. So that's the second uh, little option it had. So let's see what the third one is. So we'll go back to the DJ and look at the third one, and that's text. So what's that for? Well, that actually just exports the information we have in here. So it's a documentation of the currently selected virtual folder or playlist. So as you can see, I have a few uh, format options. I can pick HTML file, that's probably nice to look at. And I can pick text file, that's of course the most basic one, but I can also pick CSV file, that's this uh, comma separated file. So uh, that'll usually work great with the 
with spreadsheet software like Excel because it's normally it's normally assigned for that. So let's try that one. Um, and let's just say OK. And it again suggests a file name. Now you can see it's actually a CSV file. I'll cost this one for test three. And set that. And it saves it. And if I then go out here, you can see I have a CSV file now. And you can see it's actually associated with Excel because that's on my laptop. And let's just take a look at it. So it's here, and as you can see, it's documented what was in my in my virtual folder. And as you can also see, it has exactly the same columns as the one I was in here. And that's not by accident. It actually takes the exactly same folders that, that you have here. No, sorry, exactly the same columns that you have here and create those in here. So if you want other columns in your a spreadsheet or a format that you're exporting, you simply add all the columns here and you'll get those too. So that's how that works. So that's the Excel file. Let's just shut that down again. The CSV file. And the final, fourth and final option is the CTJ option here. So you can see that's uh, that actually already now figured out that I got a D drive that's actually a USB stick. Uh, so I, I'm ready to export to, for this for, to work on CDJs. So that's just another uh, way of doing the same stuff that you would normally do down here. So instead of going down here and starting adding tracks to the CDJ export, that's a, regular, a relatively new feature, um, you instead can go the other way around and tell it from up here, from the actual virtual folder, to export to CDJs. So I click OK for now with this comp compatibility. And it says it already, it's already there. You want to, yes, yes, that's fine. And then it moves along and it's, uh, it asks me which stems I want, if any. Uh, and you can also disable that so it all, uh, always exports the exactly same stems apart from the actual tracks. Um, so only a few options. So you just click OK and then it just starts. Of course, if you do it down here um, with a regular feature, you have a few more options because you can um, decide what it should do with queue points and stuff like that. And for the actual drive, you have options about what to bring over there. And you have even have options on the specific here down here where you can rename and stuff. So, um, so you can do a bit more with the regular export feature over here. But if you've already set that up once because you've used this function and you just want to uh, put this uh, in this virtual folder out there on the USB drive in a hurry uh, with basically the same setup that you've just used. Then you just click OK and it starts. So it starts up here. And it takes a while because it's doing the separation and all that stuff. And I already created a few videos about the export feature. So I'll link that in the, in the video description. But this was uh, just to show you the new, the new export dialog here with a few uh, different options that works for virtual folders and for playlists.